Hey, what's up guys? Samsung's Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus are flagship phones that come with a premium price. But if you go down a bit on the price tier, you get the Galaxy S10e, which comes with a few compromises but still brings some great features. I'm Will for GSM Marina, and this is our Galaxy S10e review. The Galaxy S10e is made from Gorilla Glass with a rounded aluminum frame, just like the regular S10. But here it's Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, not 6. Ours is in prism black, and though the finish isn't as flashy as some of the other color options, it still looks quite stylish. In a world where smartphone displays keep getting bigger and bigger, it's nice to see a phone as compact as the Galaxy S10e. With its small footprint, it feels pretty comfy in one hand. Compared to the more expensive models, there aren't any downgrades as far as waterproofing. You still get full IP68 rated water and dust resistance. Looking closely at the front, you may notice something out of the ordinary. Instead of the curved display typical of Samsung's flagships, we have a flat front panel instead. I personally like this better than a curved display. Here, you don't have to worry about accidental screen activations. But the S10e still brings a hole punch cut out for the selfie cam. It's something you have to get used to, but there are creative wallpapers out there that can mask it. The screen itself is a 5.8 inch dynamic AMOLED with a 19 by 9 aspect ratio and a 1080p resolution. As far as picture quality goes, it's awesome, on par with its more expensive siblings. You have the deep blacks of an AMOLED, and colors are also quite accurate if you opt for the natural mode and settings. Maximum brightness is impressive, 389 nits in manual mode, but it can go up to 800 nits in auto mode in bright conditions. As expected, legibility outdoors in the sun is really good. Of course, as an AMOLED you have the option for an always-on display. It's power consuming, but it's nice to be able to see your notifications at a glance. Just like the S10, the Galaxy S10e has a stereo speaker setup with the earpiece acting as the second speaker. Loudness is excellent, and the sound is quite clear. If you plug in headphones to the 3.5mm jack, sound is great as well. We measured excellent clarity, although loudness was just above average. You can choose between 128 or 256 gigs of built-in storage on the S10e. Quite a lot but it is still expandable through microSD if you need even more. One of the differences the S10e has from its siblings is the lack of an under-display fingerprint reader. Here, it's a side-mounted one that doubles as a power button. It's reliable and works well. You can also swipe it to pull down the notification shade. We only just wish it wasn't located so high up. Even though this phone is small, it's still a bit of a reach. There is face unlock as well, and it's quite responsive. Though of course not as secure as a fingerprint. You get the same cutting edge chipset on the S10e as a regular S10, either an Exynos 9820 or a Snapdragon 855, depending on your region. You can choose between 6 or 8 gigs of RAM here. As you may have guessed, performance on the S10e is awesome, on par with its more expensive counterparts. As a smaller phone, it makes sense that the S10e has a smaller battery, at 3100 mAh, but it still performs well, scoring an endurance rating of 83 hours in our proprietary tests probably because of the lower power consumption of a smaller screen. Charging speed is a bit slow though. With the bundled 15 watt fast charger, we were only able to get from 0 to 36% in 30 minutes. You do have wireless charging here like on the more expensive models, and you can use the S10e to charge another device wirelessly as well. The Galaxy S10e runs Android 9 Pie, with Samsung's custom skin called One UI on top. Swiping up or down on the home screen will bring up the app drawer. The shortcut for the notification shade is on the fingerprint reader by default. Swiping from the right edge of the screen will open up edge panels, which are fully customizable. If you go to the left, you'll find home panels and a newsfeed powered by Bixby, Samsung's virtual assistant. And of course, there is a dedicated hardware button you can use to summon Bixby too. Now you have the option to remap the button to other apps, either for a single or double press. One of the two will always open the assistant though. And new to the Galaxy family is gesture navigation. By default, swiping up from the right bar opens the task switcher, and swiping up from the left bar goes back. Swiping up from the middle bar goes home. The Galaxy S10e's cameras are almost identical to the ones on the Galaxy S10, minus the telephoto cam. The dual setup consists of a 12 megapixel main camera with a variable aperture and face detection autofocus, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide cam with fixed focus. In good light, shots with the main camera are great. Quality is on par with that of the S10. There's good detail, lively colors, and the photos have almost no noise. Dynamic range is excellent as well. Images from the ultra-wide-angle camera look pretty nice, with pleasing colors and very good dynamic range. 
and the software does a decent job of dealing with barrel distortion. Just remember that focus is fixed, so it's better not to shoot things that are too close. In portrait mode, photos are taken with a primary cam, and you need to stand quite close to your subject for headshot framing. These come out great though. There's excellent subject separation, nice detail, and natural skin tones. The dynamic range is much improved over last year too. In low light, again, performance is excellent. There's well-defined detail and little noise. The dynamic range is impressive too. The S10e does a great job in preserving highlights. You can also use the ultra-wide camera in the dark. There isn't as much detail as the main cam, but the dynamic range is equally good. The Galaxy S10e has a 10 megapixel selfie camera with face detection autofocus. Selfies come out at 6 megapixels by default. They have great detail, and we really appreciate the autofocus here. You know that your pictures will come out sharp. You can also toggle the field of view to a wider 10 megapixel one so you can fit more into the shot. In selfie portrait mode, shots look good too, but the edge detection can sometimes get confused. One feature you won't find on many phones is 4K video recording from the selfie cam at 30fps. The field of view is a bit narrow, but these look good, and there's stabilization too. 4K videos can be shot with the rear camera in 30 or 60fps, and they have HDR10 Plus support. Quality is very good regardless of FPS, with good detail and contrast, and lifelike colors. If you film through the ultra-wide cam, you can only record in 30fps. Quality is excellent, provided your subject is the right distance away to be in focus. There's EIS in all modes except 4K at 60, but you also have Super Steady Mode. It shoots through the wide-angle cam and crops to give you an impressively smooth result. But it's only in 1080p, and again, there's no autofocus here. So that's the Galaxy S10e. Though it isn't quite as top of the line as the more expensive S10 and S10+, Plus, it still brings arguably their best features. An awesome dynamic AMOLED screen, excellent cameras, stereo speakers, a cutting-edge chipset, and a premium waterproof build. On top of that, the S10e's compact form factor and conventional, uncurved display make it a lot easier to use, at least for me. As far as downsides go, there are a few nitpicks here and there. Like I mentioned before, the hole punch cutout is really something you have to get used to, and it generally eats into the content that you're watching. The fingerprint reader is a bit awkwardly placed, and I would have preferred to see it sitting a bit lower on the phone. And there's the charging speed. Compared to the fast charging competition these days, the S10e seems a bit sluggish. But with that said, this phone is still a great package. It isn't the cheapest phone around, but for less than 700 euros, you're getting pretty much the same quality as a flagship going for more than a thousand. At this price point, the S10e has some of the best value you can find, and it definitely deserves a recommendation. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in the full test findings of the Galaxy S10e, or want to compare it to some other phones, you can find a link to gsmarina.com in the description below. See ya!